What's going on, good ups? This is Red Gal 619 coming to you with celebrity news, reviews, and everything in between. It's mix up time. Let's go. Chasing Atlanta Season 2, Episode 8, Kumbaya. So, this week's episode opens up with Jaylon and Q basically just trying to find out where their relationship stands now that they're venturing in on this business together. They're around each other 24 7. Things are getting a little hectic and tense between them. So, Jaylon decides to have a one on one with Q. You've been my Everything's like this is interfering with our love life. And I feel like you have changed since. I feel like because of business, I guess I guess I was looking for like my first boyfriend to be like this. Oh, it's just love it up and all oh, business and that. But it's like I'm juggling with love life business. It's definitely a lot to handle doing both, being around someone for 24-7. Q said he definitely was in it for the long haul, that he was here for Jaylon for everything that he needs, everything that he wants, whether he feels like it's a good <laughs> decision or not, he's there for him. I don't know if this is the case any longer because I do notice in the confessionals, Jaylon is no longer wearing his engagement band. So yeah, I'll keep my ear to the streets and if I hear anything new, I'll bring it to you. You know how I do. The next scene we had Cameron, Montel, Sky, and Devon, and they're discussing how Cameron is feeling kind of neglected, that people aren't supporting him in his modeling, and of course, dealing with his health issues. He feels like his friends aren't around, so he's telling people he feels that they're not being genuine, that they're being fake friends. Clearly, Devon and Sky are hurt by the statement, so he wanted to have a sit down with Cameron and basically let him know that they are true friends. They might not be there for him physically all the time, but they are there for him. They do support him in his, you know, venture into the modeling business and everything that he wants to do in life. And, you know, if there's any issues that he should have no problem to pick up the phone and call and let them know that he's feeling some type of way. He needs to stop listening to other people and their comments on what he should do within this friendship. I said, for me, I want to continue to get to know you. I want to continue to build a friendship with you. And I just, I'm not going to do the hearsay shit no more. Because I haven't done that in a while. I got my back put against the wall for a long motherfucking time. So I forget how to handle shit. Right. So, but I, for, for hit this, this, this day on board, I'm going to start contacting you guys directly. And that's just for me. Girl, come on, give me a hug. Sunny, yeah, yeah, girl. Hey. Okay, Hercules, Hercules, uh, girl. Well, Let me get past my ass. Yeah. All right, I got a street fresh. I'm going to let her Come on, come on, come on. And now for the moment we all been waiting for the intervention for these guys to sit in a circle, air out their differences, and see if they can find a common ground between all this drama that's been going on from season one to season two. Everybody wrote notes, put out their intentions on the intervention, on the session, and it was going good, you guys. It really was going good. But uh, all of a sudden, things went left when Montel decided that he wanted to discuss his feelings on Akeem and his approach when it came to his ex. He wanted to know why it took him so long to tell him, why he chose that event, that time, that space to tell him. What is his intentions really? He always claims that they're good, but it always comes out shady, two-faced, very messy. Throwing the stones in a glass house. People are tired of it, Akeem. And I don't know why you can't see that this is what you are doing and how you are letting others perceive you. But it, it's the truth. You are being messy. There's no way that you can say, oh, was I not supposed to say that over and over and over again? After a while, it does seem that 
you are intending to hurt people. Your intentions aren't what they see. You say that they're good, but they don't seem to be that way. Montel wasn't with them shits. The thing about it is, I, I, I know it was, because see, that's what I'm saying, like, you, you, you have to, on, you have to yeah. realize, what, you might not have the attention, but as soon as I hear, your ex in my inbox. It comes with the sexual. He's Thank trying you. to holler at me. And not only that, he said something Psycho. sexual. And then he said something sexual. He's on yeah. the camera with them. So it was like, stop trying to vindict yourself. Stop trying to make it seem like that's something that you didn't say. When honestly, something that you had to say to get up to make me upset for me to leave. Mm -hmm. Make me speak on it was two days prior to me bringing it up to you. That's when he came to me. So it's like it's what he set my mind back to. This what he did to me. It pretty much ends there. I'm not really sure if he returned to the intervention to continue on with this discussion. I hope he does. I hope they're able to find a common ground, maybe to just agree to disagree. I don't know. Don't know when they're going to drop this episode because I'm sure that the reunion, if I'm not mistaken, is right around the corner. The 6th to be exact. And of course, it's going to be hosted by the legendary T.S. Madison. And you know I am here for that. Definitely going to be reviewing it. Tell me your thoughts on the situation, on the show, on the season. How do you feel about it? Please put it in the comments below. I love to read them. And while you're down there, go ahead, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell for all my latest and greatest content. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.